Well, we thought we'd introduce you to a new subculture. Actually, new, no, very old it's, subculture. It's new to many of you out there, yes. I believe. This subculture is something that both of us witnessed a lot, especially when I first got to China. Yeah. I've actually got a clip we're going to show where I ran into these guys back in 2006. But, or well, maybe it was 2007, whatever, it doesn't matter. But these guys, you used to see them a lot. Mm -hmm. You see them more in the more rural parts of China, to be sure. honest. And when we travel on our motorcycles everywhere, you see them. They're a very specific type of subculture. It's kind of funny. Let's, uh, Let's roll a couple clips before we talk okay. about them. Uh, for those of you at home, you've got some very interesting... Crazy hairstyles. I love this guy. He's amazing. He's their leader. He's definitely their yeah. leader. Yeah. Some of the most outlandish kind of hair and styles you've ever seen. A little bit reminiscent of, well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a mix. I, I want to unback this, but I, I kind of want to give them a flavor first. Sure. I mean, look, there's a, there, there's a mixture of what looks like punk. I love this, how he just transforms. Doesn't he look normal he there? He looks normal there. And then... Bam, there yeah. he is. He think, what he thinks is a massive improvement. <laughs> the the, <laughs> the Lego hair. hair, it's like ramen Roblox. It's whatever it is, it's just awful. <laughs> and you may be wondering why they're smelling their fingers. We'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, my punch, favorite. Punch, my punch, favorite. punch. Mm, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> I got white face on, bitch. <laughs> yeah. So actually here we can see, that's me in front walking there. This is way back, one of my first videos. In an underground Arcade, because arcades were still a thing back in, uh, you know, the early days of China. You still get a few of them around because people can't, well, don't really have their own space to game at home. Everyone lives in small apartments. So there are arcades and they're still quite popular. Um, but this is the kind of place you'd find these guys hanging out. We we're going to tell you what the subculture is called and everything, but I'll show you. Uh, here was my first interaction with any of these guys. Uh, there they are, just hanging out and had a little chat with them and so on. You can see the, the crazy hairs, styles and stuff. I think we should probably start telling people a little bit about this subculture. Yeah, so this is called Shamatu. Mm -hmm. And Shamatu is a, it's kind of like a loan word. Or it's actually a play on words, I should say, for smart. Yeah, smart. Like, you look smart. You're yeah. dressed smart, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, China being a very, not only homogenous society, but homogenous in, in subcultures as yes, well. Yes, yes. I would say the most popular things you'd be into are basketball. Mm -hmm. You, If you're a boy, you definitely play basketball. Yep. I've seen the bicycle gang. When I say gang, I mean people that put on spandex and go cycling. Sure, You've seen sure. that, right? Yeah. It's The subcultures are just so so all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're part of something very specific, right? Yeah. Um, so like, you know, people that are into motorcycles that we met. They're only into motorcycles. Mm. You're into motorcycles and you smoke cigarettes and drink tea. Sure. It's very specific. I don't know how to explain. Like, whereas in the West, you'd have a very uh, a rainbow of different kind of hobbies that you might be well, into. Well, look, here's the thing. Part of Chinese society is, you know, the, the nail that stands out gets hammered gets down. Gets hammered down, Okay, right? and it's very much that way. And so you will find people prefer to follow a safe trend. Right. So you don't get subcultures that really stand out yes okay? except these guys do stand out that's the thing so here's shamata now shamata that music that you play can you play that little clip of music in the background so people can get an idea what? so when this comes out just listen to it so you can get an idea so immediately i saw a lot of people in the chat were confused they're saying oh they must like metal oh yeah. they must like punk music no, no. shamata listened to the worst like possible techno. techno disco music. I would say it's more like electronic dance music from a very specific era, like a Chinese rip-off knockoff of, chi of de dance music. And mixed in with weird mixed Russian in. stuff. And yeah, it's interesting because but, yeah. you'll be in the clubs where these guys hang out. Yes. And you have those happy DJs like, Daja do hao! Daja do chi lai! Hao hai! Yi san su! Gai su! And then they drop the beat and it's like... And you get these guys. So Shama Tua... Is this weird? It's not punk. It's not metal. It's nothing like this. They are usually migrant workers. And there's yeah. this phenomenon in China of migrant workers. They don't make very much money. 
But in order to leave your impoverished village and go to a place like Huizhou or Shenzhen where we lived, mm -hmm. they go and work in factories. Yeah. So they go and do this, and they're very lonely, but they tend to group together with each other, especially yeah. if they're from the same province. So these guys potentially are from Guizhou or Sichuan, like mm -hmm. a province that maybe isn't so wealthy. Sure. And they go down to Guangdong where we used to live to do their factory work. And there's this weird pervasive subculture that you'll find, which is Shamato, where they do these loud hairstyles. Mm -hmm. um, the girls a lot of times don't even wear makeup, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. And the men will go and do outlandish things. A lot of that spiky hair, a lot of rainbow hair. But this, the leader of the Shamata here that we saw, he's yeah. going for the more Lego man look. Yeah. He's got this like solidified Lego man hair. I love when he's flexing in the barber. Yeah. And he's like, look at me now. I'm, I'm a piece of shit. And he's like, bam, look at yeah. my Lego hair now. Well, like so, when, when I first got to China, I honestly thought they were just punks because, you know, right. I, you I, don't know any better, I yeah. grew up in, in a situation like, you know, in South Africa, punks were, were a thing in the 80s and mm -hmm. the, the 90s because they we borrow the a thing, lot yeah. from UK culture. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the UK, you know, in my youth, you'd see a lot of punk punks. Punk was a huge thing here. You see a lot of punks on the train, like real punks. I'm talking yeah. about not posers. Like yeah. Actual, yeah, sure. you know, like that's their life. It's right. This is not a costume, man. Right. You know, that's that kind of, kind of yeah. Um, you, you know, if you take a photo of, of them, they want you to pay, and, you know, that mm. kind of thing, wearing their Doc Martens and like white laces for skinheads and red laces for punks and all that kind of thing. Anyway, this looks to me just like normal punk rock attire when you see these girls over here. But then they've made their own weird mix because the guys don't actually do the punk rock thing. They Not have usually. more of a... A KTV host. It's a KTV you know? host. So we have to, exp this is why we, we think it's so interesting to explain to you guys. Yeah. It's the hairdresser look. Yes. There's this thing where migrant workers, oftentimes, they'll become barbers when they move to a richer, yeah. wealthier city. They wear so those pastel blue, uh, very tight yes. pants that come up to like the sock line. You right. Know? So there's this mm. thing, and this is a very big thing we could dive into, but yeah. in China, you know, in America, like a local person is just a local person. Let's say I'm from L.A., right? Mm. That person maybe came from from Michigan, but they live in L.A. No one really cares. Mm. Whereas in China, if you are a migrant, let's say you move to Huizhou or even when I lived in Baotou, Inner Mongolia, sure. these no-name places, the locals are much wealthier of than course. somebody that will come into the city, right? Yeah. And they're very proud. I've never seen a, such a segregated society in China where the sure. locals versus outsiders. Well, you they know call them Bindi Ren, Wadi Ren. Wadi Ren, yeah. right? Mm. Bindi Ren means a local, yeah. Wadi Ren means a, an outsider. And there's a whole thing in China where it's very judgmental against outsiders, especially these migrant workers. So oh, they yeah. form these kind of weird cliques, right? Yeah. And that's this kind of outsider look. So in China, Shama Te is not... I, before any any Chinese person gets angry and say we think this is like some normal thing, it's pervasive around China, mm. but it's not smiled upon whatsoever. No, These are the outcasts. Them. People hate them. Unbelievable yeah. outcasts. Now we we tend to have a soft spot. I remember when I first got to China, I used mm. to go to some clubs and I made like what eight hundred dollars a month or something ridiculously low. So I would go to cheaper nightclubs. Yeah, I made they, way less than you when I first got there. Oh really? Yeah, okay, um, five, maybe five or eight hundred bucks a month. Anyway, it was very <laughs> yeah. low. Sure. And so what I would do to go, because I want to drink beer, I want to hang out, meet people, right? Right. And my Chinese friends would always judge me for some of the lower end clubs I would go in the beginning because mm. I wasn't being classist like they were. I wasn't sure. going to where the local people go. I was going where the Shama Te factory workers, and they're always super nice. Yeah. We'd share our knockoff beers together. I remember I, the first girl I ever danced with in China, she was a Shama Te. Okay. Um, a hilarious bunch of people, and they're just a bunch of outsiders that are lonely, and they're, they're well, out of their you own. Know, uh, motorcycles are also looked down on in China yes, as a yes. poor man's transport. So what you'd find is the younger sort of wannabe cool kids tend to gravitate towards the shamato culture. You get a lot of them on the scooter, like little yes. scooter gangs yes. and stuff. So whenever I'd be working on bikes, because I used to go to these yes. little bike shops and work, they'd always be there. So I used yeah. to hang out with a lot of these guys and they are just like kind of salt of the earth, you know. Normal folk. They're yeah. pretty normal. Well, to be I'd honest. say like the very low level yeah. of society. My like point the, is they're not like... They're, they're nice people. Yeah, they're not like necessarily into anything bad is my hmm. point. Look, I gotta say... This thing they're doing with their nose, I actually don't know. What yeah, so when about. I said we we're going to explain it to you, we have no idea. Apparently, it's something that came from K-pop. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of crossover, and, and they love, uh, Shamata love counterfeit brands. You see this counterfeit Chanel yeah. shirt? Yeah. They love counterfeit brands, and they love this tight-fitting, very cheap, uh, almost like you'd buy clothes from like Goodwill or he's, something. He's got like the the, the, the metal spikes, kind of like a punk. He does. In, there's, in there his, are elements. Yeah, elements of punk. This, by the way, what they're doing with their that's, fingers, that's straight out of K-pop and yeah, K-dramas and stuff. Yeah. That just means love. That's hard, so when yeah. someone does that, it just means like, you know, I love you or whatever. Yeah. This holding a rose thing, I don't know. There's, 
it's kind of a mix of Korean and Japanese host culture. So it it's so what I one. wanted to say is that it's actually in the beginning when mm. Shamatsu happened in the beginning when I first came and yeah. when you were first there. It was a direct ripoff, a very bad, poor, rural ripoff of a Japanese host culture. Yeah, yeah. And now because of per the pervasiveness of, of uh, Korean music, K-pop, things like that, they borrow elements from that as well. It's yeah. actually just an amalgamation of, of random crap. So you might be wondering why this particular Shamata, the leader here, mm -hmm. why his face is covered in white paint. So here he looks normal. He actually looks normal here. Well, with his drawn on beard. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to look silly or whatever. This is so he ridiculous. looks much more silly. He's with like after. Ultraman cosplayers right. in the background holding Which is roses. Japanese. Yeah. Just keep it's, skipping. Ultraman forward. is huge in China. Mm. Um, Massive. It's, it's, you know, it was one of the cartoons and things or like live action children's things that ever played during the 80s and stuff in the 90s. So a lot of kids love Ultraman, you know, especially when I used to teach kindergarten back in like 2006, six seven. They would all, you know, pretend to be Ultraman on the playground. They'd all right. have the Ultraman bags and lunch boxes and stuff. You know, that was Ultraman was a huge thing. So it's yeah, my wife said she grew up watching that. Yeah, probably from their youth as well. These guys. Yeah, I mean, even kids with that hour I was teaching, they all watched Ultraman. That's yeah. that thing. That's old, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like crazy. Seventies or something. The knockoff Ultraman toys are everywhere yeah. in China. You know. So yeah, this you can watch this. This is my favorite, probably my favorite clip. So yeah. You're wondering why is his face like an alien shape, right? <laughs> Number one, that's a beauty filter. Yeah, they use a beauty filter. You can you can tell actually how the background moves around. Yes. Yeah. Like, you yeah. Know. yeah. Anyway. Now, number two, mm -hmm. the reason that um, his face is white is because white is a it's this is a hangover of traditional Chinese culture. If yeah. you're brown, kind of like that girl you saw go like this, yeah. she would be a very dark skinned girl looked down upon a rural girl. Yeah. So what these guys do, they would come from more tan backgrounds. They could have grown up doing farm work. They That's spend the whole a bit point. more low time class, outside. They look it's darker. more low class to be darker. Right. Like you say, it's only laborers and people that have to work in the sun. But, you know, like government officials, royalty, they get to stay inside and be fanned by their Correct. servants and stuff. So they have white Correct. Skin. And yeah. so you see the leader Shamata here, he wants to be the royalty. He wants to be the white skinned boy. Mm. I always was curious, and Chani, you probably saw this a lot too, but I was always curious why they don't finish it. Because it always stops around the chin line and then you have this brown neck. Yeah. And it always looked very strange, like a Michael Jackson look, right? Sure. So I remember in when I was teaching university in particular, you'd have most of the girls uh, from the countryside, right? In some yeah. of these universities. And what would happen is that if they had a crush on a boy, right? Mm -hmm. And they were actually going to like maybe express their love to him or finally like tell him, like, they would dress up in this, you know, previously no makeup. They would dress up in this white face, but it would be completely cut off here. And I always thought that was really interesting. They'd yeah. go all out, like crazy dolled up with this white makeup and it's just like a clown. And then completely, <laughs> you, you, you have know. to appreciate the effort. Though. I do, I know. Yeah, and I'm not making fun of it. I just, no. I always thought it was very strange and interesting because it's, it's just, just a different kind of thing. You also have yeah. to understand makeup in China is still fairly new. Sure. Um, when I first got to China, actually makeup was frowned upon. All was, of the yeah. girls that I dated or that I knew would tell me that if you wear a lot of makeup, it means you're a prostitute. And yeah. So they stayed away from it. It's insane how fast that changed. It did, like of overnight. Course. It's crazy. And it now, like luxury makeup brands are all the thing, and being made up is very. You normal. have to wear makeup. But now, you know, yeah. it, there was a, a transition period. And yeah. You're talking about that. Yeah. Right now, they know what they're doing. They know, yeah. But that it's was different. that awkward period, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. If you go now, like when I when I was at the end when I was teaching the girls, mm -hmm. they all wore makeup to class. Yeah. But towards the beginning, it was this very awkward phase of of this really this shamata looking. Yeah, but boy. the shamata this this guy by the way is relevant because you got this off of his tiktok channel right yeah and yeah. he's he's doing it now and this is yeah. honestly something that i thought had died out it was dying out yeah shamata mm. were some of the first people and like i'll be honest china can be a very exclusive society yeah. yes as a foreigner if you walk in you get curiosity and stuff yeah. but the shamata were some of the first people that brought me in and actually said come sit at our table and they weren't trying to like impress me they weren't trying to be like oh the foreigners here let's yeah. do all this fancy stuff they were, I was just some dirty backpacker and they were just some factory workers and we all had a great time together. Sure. It was sure. good stuff. I like, I like the shamata. Absolutely. So hopefully you guys now know if you see that stuff uh, floating around the internet or you see pictures of it or something, now you know what it is. Yeah, because a lot of people I saw on TikTok were asking what the hell is going on. Yeah. <laughs>